Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to part four and the final video of the DJ Booth uh, Rolling Workstation, whatever you want to call it, uh, video. It is completely done now. All the internal wiring is ran. Everything's pre-wired, ready to go. And I even have a few surprises. So as you notice, like in the last video I talked about, I decided not to do a TV on the front. So we have a frame uh, with some woodwork in it. This actually does something pretty cool, something that might surprise you. And uh, let's take a look at that. Now this is called a front-loading poster frame. And it has these little frames that click up. So you can actually undo all of these and whatever's in there will come out and you can replace it. So this design right here is my default design. If my clients choose to for only 150 extra dollars, I can actually take this out and make a custom monogram that will go in there. White background, black lettering, and it will be in their wedding photos. It'll be completely tailored and custom to their event. So you literally just undo these. Whatever's in there. Pops right out. And just as an example, I had a banner made with my company logo on it. You pop it in there, set it in there flush, close your hinges or your frame, and it's in there. It's good to go. So I could do something like this if I'm doing a bridal show and I bring the booth with me. I can put uh, my company logo in there. I do a couple free events a year, uh, some charity events. So that can pop in there. I don't think that's cheesy when you're doing uh, free. Now this logo will actually go on the laptop here, on the front of it. Something small but subtle. Don't usually do the logos, but a lot of companies are doing it now as kind of a branding thing and it's working out very well for them. So, you know, it's not as crazy and in your face as this, but I think when it's on a laptop, it's very subtle and it looks classy. Now the dimensions of this booth is about 50 inches wide, 41 inches tall, and about two, uh, two feet, two inches deep. Uh, it's perfect, actually, it'll roll right in the van with just enough room on each side to where nothing will get knocked off or clipped or anything like that. Same way with the height. And I actually like this height. Your standard facades are about 48 inches tall, four feet tall, which is about here. And anymore, I feel like the facades are becoming more of a barrier between you and the interaction with the guests. It does hide your equipment well, but um, anymore, the way controllers are, you don't really want to hide the equipment necessarily. You kind of want to showcase it off while you're performing, at least if you're a performing DJ. If you're just a wedding DJ, you don't need any kind of beat mixing or any kind of mixing for that, for that matter. You know, maybe that's not a huge uh, concern of yours. But when I'm mixing, I feel that it's much more interactive and I have more successful events when I don't have the facade. So this kind of replaces that while having an extremely elegant look that can fit into any situation, whether it's a barn wedding, whether it's a very, very high class venue, even if it's an outdoor event. This is completely portable, ready to go. And as you can tell, it's on casters. So it rolls very, very nicely. Even on this very thick carpet, we have very thick carpet down in our basement. It still rolls very, very nice. So on a flat, hard surface like hardwood or concrete or marble floors, this will work just fine. Hey, Daddy, I'm gonna turn it, we're going to turn it around. Hold on, baby. We're going to turn it around so I can show you the backside and what I've done to both. So as you can see, the backside of this booth is just as nice as the front side, which is awesome because I actually do. There's a lot of venues here in the Louisville market where guests will not just uh, see the back of your booth, but they'll also enter the hall in places where the back of your booth is. So to me, it was important to have a nice clean look on the back side as well as the front side. All of the wiring is completely internal and is actually stored in here. Got some nice little uh, crystal uh, handles here. These doors magnetically lock into place and just open up. And as you can tell, I'm actually able to store a lot of stuff in here. So everything that's in here, I've got two Intimidator Spot 255 IRCs, my moving heads and a small Harbinger line array system. There's no doubt in my mind that you'd be able to fit a uh, EV Evolve uh, system, Evolve 50 system in here. So I'm able to pack everything in at the same time. So if I take these out, you'll notice kind of a mess of wiring back in there because this booth is completely 
pre-wired and ready to go. So you take out your equipment. There are whole wire cutouts on each side so I can run my lines to my speakers. There is a 16 plug surge protector in there that has everything plugged in, including the laptop, the controller, the microphone uh, system. And then there's plenty of plugs of anything else I could want to put in there as well. Now, if I run subs, of course, I would uh, plug the subs in at a different outlet because you don't want to have too much power coming out of one outlet. Not can you only just blow circuit breakers and it stops all the music, but uh, it can actually cause a little bit of damage to your equipment if you're not careful. And when the event is done, pick everything up. Very carefully put it back in. Close your doors. Go ahead and lock into place. And you're good to go. Now I know so some of you might be wondering about what is keeping the equipment secure in its place. I am actually using Velcro that's rated to hold 10 pounds vertically. So with this being horizontal, never going to be vertical, this stuff isn't going anywhere. I mean, I can even try. As you can see, the whole booth shakes because it's completely Velcroed down. This stuff is awesome. But at the same time, if I were to ever replace this unit, I can just tear it up. It's not going to hurt the booth. It's not going to hurt the controller if I decide to resell it. But it holds it secure for transportation. Now, I am going to get a deck saver, which is a uh, polycarbonate clear cover that will go over the controller to keep it dust-free and dry in the event of having to move this in a little bit of rain. Laptop stand is also Velcroed in. And I even had to put some Velcro on the laptop itself because... This laptop is a little too big for this particular stand. The next laptop I'm getting is a 15 inch opposed to a 17 inch and will sit a little better on that laptop stand without having the, the fear of it tipping forward. So, you wanna say hi? Yeah. <laughs> this is my daughter Ryan, say hi. hi. <laughs> Go over there, sweetie. So yeah, this is my DJ booth. So this is the performing height of the booth. I'm five foot 10. So I think this is a great level. It still allows for a lot of interaction between me and the crowd. And if someone comes up to make a request or just say, hey, give me a high five, whatever, you know, they're going to see all this. They're going to see me performing. And that, I think, adds a lot of production value to your performance. It's not like you're just a guy back here pushing buttons on a laptop. They can actually see you working something that probably looks like sci-fi to them, you know, with my MIDI controller that's controlling my uh, moving heads with all the shows that I've put together in my DMX. From you know, to the to the laptop controller, I'm sorry, the uh, the MIDI controller itself, running everything on the laptop, the microphones. I've got the cat, what I call a captain's shelf here, for my um, for my clipboard. That's going to have all of in the information for the wedding, so the timeline, the names, the grand entrance, all of that stuff. So this is designed to make my job easier, and to give the client a more um, performance-based experience, whether it's their wedding, a prom, no matter what it is, I feel like this booth will benefit not just me in the way of you know, having a quick setup and teardown, but it will also enhance the experience for my clients. That ultimately is the main reason why I built it. So if you like this, you know, tell me what you think. Um, I, I will make another video of all the materials that you need to build one of these. It's actually super, super simple. There was a little bit of uh, a learning curve. You know, I'm not super... You know, I'm not educated in working with wood and stuff like that. So a lot of this was just kind of doing my own research and, and, and just putting it together on my own. My daughter helped me. Her, her help was invaluable. Without her, I wouldn't have been able to get at least the shell of it started. Um, but, you know, I, I love this thing. I'm kind of in awe of how good it looks um, just because, you know, I'm not a woodworker. I'm not a carpenter. So to see this kind of coalesced and come together and have it look as good as it does. I'm proud of this. I'm proud to stand behind this workstation. So anyway, uh, if you guys have any questions, definitely get hold of me on Facebook, um, or you can leave comments down in the comment section if you're watching this video on YouTube. And um, yeah, you tell me what you think. If you, if you hate it, tell me. If you, if you like it, then tell me. I, uh, I want to know your feedback. And if you have any ideas on, on things that could improve it, definitely let me know. And hopefully I gave you all 
also a little bit of inspiration to do something like this. This will definitely set me apart in, apart in my market. No one in my market will have anything like this, at least for a while. So um, that is a selling point to some clients, believe it or not, if they don't want a bad looking DJ setup in their photos. So this is one of a kind. Anyway, thanks for coming. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more videos just like this. April 27th kicks off my wedding season, and this year is going to be one of the biggest years I've ever had. We are already at 32 weddings, and we're getting inquiries every single day. We're throwing out quotes every single day. We're booking on average about three weddings a week. So we're probably going to hit our goal of 40 this year, and we might even surpass it. I will talk to you all soon.